Okay, I wanted to review with you guys about L'Hopital's rule. Um, you can use it with indeterminate forms when you are solving limits. Indeterminate forms are like 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, negative infinity over infinity, negative infinity over negative infinity, and so on. When you're when you're getting things like that and you're when you're plugging in to try to do limits, this is when you want to use L'Hopital's rule. Okay, for my first example, I want to show you uh, a situation again where we can use L'Hopital's rule. So if you first plug in zero, uh, the cosine of zero is one. Plus two times zero would be zero, then a minus one. One minus one would be zero on top. 3 times 0 will be 0 on the bottom. So this will be a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. Now, when you use L'Hopital's rule, you, you want to put a little L and apostrophe over the um, equals mark to show someone that you're using it. And the next step would be, again, to bring down your limit as x approaches 0. But you would take the derivative of the top separately from the derivative of the bottom. This is not a quotient rule situation. This is its own thing. So do not try to do the quotient rule. Do not mistake this for the quotient rule. It is not the quotient rule. Just do the derivative of the top. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. And the derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of 1 is 0. On the bottom, the derivative of 3x is 3. Now when you plug in 0, you have the negative sine of 0 plus 2 over 3. Since the sine of 0 is 0, you end up with 2 thirds. For my second example, again, if we plug in 0, we get e to the 0, anything to the 0 power is 1, anything to the 0 power is 1, so I get 2 minus 2 on top, I get a 0, and again, if I plug in 0 on the bottom, I'm going to get 1 minus 1, which is 0. And so it is an indeterminate form, I can use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to put equals and my little L apostrophe. I'm going to bring down my limit and take the derivative of the top. So e to the x is e to the x. e to the negative x would be e to the negative x times negative 1. So I'm going to bring that negative 1 to the front and say this is negative 1 or negative e to the negative x. The derivative of 2 would be 0, so I'm not going to put that. And then on the bottom, the derivative of 1 is 0. I'm going to bring down the negative. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. So that is going to be a positive now. Sine 2x. And then I have to chain rule it, so times 2. So I'm going to make that look a little better. I'm going to erase the positive because we don't normally put positives in front of things. And I'm going to move this 2 to the front. So that, whoops, um, everything is looking nice. Now I want to plug in 0 again. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So on top I have 1 minus 1. The sine of 0 is 0. So on the bottom I have 2 times 0. Again, I'm getting a 0 over 0 indeterminate form. I can repeat L'Hopital's rule. I can do it again. So I'm going to set it up. I'm going to bring down my limit notation, and I'm going to take the derivative of again. So derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of e to the negative x is e to the negative x times negative 1. So I'm going to bring that to the front and make it a plus. Then on the bottom, derivative of sine is cosine. I'm bringing down this 2, and then I have to chain rule it, so times 2 for that 2x. Again, I'm going to clean it up, and I'm going to take the 2 in front and the 2 back here and make a 4 for the front. All right, now, when I plug in, now I have anything to the 0 power is 1. So I have 1 plus 1 on top, and then 4 times the cosine of 0, and the cosine of 0 is 1. So I end up with 2 over 4, or 1 half. 
Okay, for the third example, I'm changing it up a little bit. Our x is going to go to infinity instead of 0 this time. So let's think about this. Um, think about your toolbox function in natural log. As you go to the right on it, it goes up forever. It does grow slowly, but it goes up forever. So that's like infinity. That's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. On the bottom, um, y equals x is a diagonal line. So it goes up as you go toward infinity forever. So you have infinity over infinity as an indeterminate form. That means I can use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to notate that I'm using L'Hopital's rule and bring down my limit as I go to infinity. And then I'm going to take my derivative. So the derivative of natural log is 1 over x and the derivative of x is 1. So now if I look at this and I simplify it not using L'Hopital's rule, I'm just simplifying, so I'm not going to put an L. As I go to infinity, 1 over x over 1 is just 1 over x. This comes into your limits at infinity rules, and this is a small over big situation. So small over big means my limit is 0. Okay, for the fourth example, again I'm going um, for x as it goes to infinity. And when you look at this, you're like, how can this possibly be a L'Hopital's rule? It's not a fraction, because L'Hopital's rule is going to be in a fraction form. Well, that's when you have to remember that a negative power means it can move to the bottom when it's uh, not attached by a plus or minus to anything. So I'm going to rewrite this problem as the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of x over e to the, uh, e to the x. Sorry, once I move it, it's not negative. All right, now, if you think about going to infinity, your square root function, some of y'all know it as the shooting star, it gets higher and higher, so that goes off to infinity. And e to the x is your exponential growth, so it gets higher and higher going off to infinity. It's an infinity over infinity indeterminate form. So I can use L'Hopital's rule. I'm going to give that notation that I'm using it. I'm going to bring down the limit stuff that I'm trying to figure out. And then I'm going to take my derivatives. So square root of x is x to the 1 half. So it's a power rule, 1 half x to the negative 1 half. And then the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So here it seems kind of confusing. But again, I can simplify this using algebra, not taking L'Hopital's rule, just moving things around legally. The 1 half I can actually write as the 1 over 2. The e to the x is obviously on the bottom. And then this x is to a negative 1 half power. So that can be moved to the bottom and made to be thought of as the square root of x or x to the 1 half power on the bottom. Now as I go to infinity I'm looking at a small over big situation because my x's are on the bottom. So small over big is zero, and that is my answer.